What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with some Raid Shadow Legends and we are on the eve of a new fusion uh, which is going to be opening up on August the 5th which is this Thursday. So um, a lot of people have been making videos about this, I kind of wanted to just go over it, uh, just touch on it a little bit, kind of give my opinion on things that are going on. Uh, with this fusion and kind of just give you guys my general mindset whenever one of these fusion events uh, occurs kind of let you know how I think about it uh, and decide whether or not I'm actually going to go after it so we have uh, mother Sabel here August the 5th you'll be able to fuse a brand new legendary champion from Knight Revenant faction and force champion will provide great support to your team healing and speeding up her allies and will be a strong asset to any collection keep one eye on the news we'll be releasing details very soon well a lot of details uh, have already been out we've seen some of this stuff um, on the test server a little bit i've seen some leaked stuff on her as well that i'll talk about in just a minute but let's go ahead and just uh let's click out of here She's going to be jumping into the Knight Revenant faction, which is a pretty decent faction overall. Has one of the harder faction wars uh, to defeat here. You can see we are pretty short on legendaries for this faction. However, we are on the last stage 21 of this faction wars, so it's not really a place that she's going to help me on my main account, which is something that's going to weigh into my decision on whether or not I go after her. But real quick, let's just pull up her information here. This is on Plarium's forum where they released all the information on her as well as some of the newer champs, the new Doom Tower champs and other things that are coming to the game. But really, we just want to take a look at her kit and we're going to kind of talk about where she might be useful, uh, what account she might be useful for. Uh, first off, though, I want to tell you guys, um, anytime you're considering doing one of these fusions, there's a lot of things that you have to weigh. There's not a one size fits all uh, we get a lot of questions in Discord about, you know, should I go for this fusion? You know, which champion should I six star next? You know, all the all the general questions you get. There's never an easy answer for any of those, and everything is usually based on someone's opinion, whether or not they've actually had that champion and used them. You know, what their overall knowledge of the game is. There's a lot of different things that go into it, but what you have to look at really, and uh, the main reason I want to say this is just there's so many people out there right now that will say. This champion is trash. Oh no, this champion's amazing. You should go after this champion. Um, everything is opinion, especially when it comes to a lot of the stuff you hear from the raid content creators. It's not like an end all be all. If they tell you a champion's garbage, uh, most likely it's just the fact that they're at end game and they have every champion under the sun and that champion is not gonna do anything for their account. Uh, they take that champion into a dungeon and put it in savage gear and try to run it against dungeon waves. And when it doesn't one shot the dungeon waves, they say it's trash. I've seen that happen all too often. Um, so they may just not have experience with the champion. They may not be looking at the kit properly uh, They probably just like I said don't need the champion. It's not going to do anything for their account So they don't uh, really give it too much interest So take everything you hear with a grain of salt when you want to look at these fusions You need to look at number one whether or not it's going to be feasible for you to actually do it uh, Are you going to have the resources on your account? What stage of your account are you? Uh, is this champion going to help your account progress? Is this champion going to help the rest of your roster, uh, you know, in whatever area you're trying to push in the game? Uh, that, those are basically some of the big things you really need to look at, look at, because every champion is basically going to be dependent on those things. Uh, what level you are, what resources you have, how easy it is for you to acquire resources in the game, and basically where you are in the game at what level, you know, early game, mid game, early, late game, you know, end game, it kind of depends on where you are. So that's kind of the way I look at these things. And you guys know if you follow my free-to-play series basically on these regular fusions we don't even worry about trying to get the legendary because on that account i'm usually starved for resources i'm trying to build champions for account progression in other areas like dungeons uh, and doom tower and things like that so a lot of times when we get a fusion like this for that account i know right off the bat i'm probably not even going to be able to go after the legendary uh, we tried with brogni and we just got burned out on it so at that point i was kind of like yeah it's not really feasible especially when i dedicate a lot of time to my main account i have three different rate accounts i play so that's something else i have to take into account is which account am i going to give the most time this week or during these fusion events and usually it's going to be my main account because i'm going to try to get the champion there for content or just to have it as part of the collection but my free to play when this account comes up usually it's which one of the epics is going to be good enough for me to try to get and that's another thing you kind of have to look at we're not going to go into the epics today but there's going to be four epics with this fusion uh, there's probably going to be anywhere from four to 16 different rare champions i haven't really seen anything on the rare champions they're going to offer yet 
So there's going to be other champions you can acquire as part of the fusion that in some cases can actually help your account also. That's something else you have to look at. So when the uh, fusion first drops, you'll have all the champions. You can kind of look at them, take a look at their kits and decide whether or not something else might help you uh, with your account. I kind of took this approach with, um, let's see, the last dwarf fusion that they did. I believe it was Herndig. So on my main account, where are the dwarves? Oh, they're all the way at the bottom here. So they did Herndig. Now I had all the epics ready to go and could have actually fused him. And then I kind of decided not to at the last minute because I'd already finished Dwarves Faction War 21. Uh, he wasn't going to help me out there at all. Um, he's a really good attack champion, really solid nuker. He can farm Nightmare Campaign. Overall, just a really solid uh, fusion champion that they did. But on my main account, where I was going to be able to actually fuse him, uh, I've got nukers by the dozen. I have account farming champions by the dozen. I, every single role that he could have basically done on my account, I basically have two or three other champions already built for it. So I didn't really need him. So I just decided, you know, that was during a time period I was a little burned out of the game. And even though I could have fused him, I had all the epics done. And I said, you know what? I really want to try out this Skathix guy in Lizardman Faction Wars. And he actually did help me, you know, eventually three star all that faction war. But there were other champions I kind of wanted to explore other than this guy. And like I said, I already had other champions on my account that filled his role. Uh, so there really wasn't that much of a need for me to pursue it. So that's another thing I will look at. Anytime there's a fusion like this is, do I need this champion? What's it going to do for my account? In that case, it was something where I just decided to go ahead and skip it and just do the epics. And, um, you know, I don't, on my main account especially, I'm not really going to notice much different. So really just wanted to get that out of the way. I know I rambled on a little bit, but it's basically just when you go into something like this, look at it from your own point of view, make your own opinion on it. Don't listen to anybody else. Look at the kit, read the kit. Um, you know, that's one thing that's interesting about raid is we have uh, a lot of people that are always asking questions, going, looking at guides. If you just read the kit on a champion, it's, it really, once you know what's in that champion's kit, you should be able to get a general idea of if it's going to help you, uh, what kind of gear you would want to use on it and things like that so um you usually don't need someone to tell you what to do you know your account the best uh take a look at what's on your roster what's going to help you out the most and then make your decision uh based on that and also based on like i said whether or not you're going to actually have the resources to go after uh these traditional fusions because they're usually a lot harder than the fragment fusions which i tend to prefer now because they're much easier much more low maintenance to get those so but without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Mother Sabel. Again, she's a legendary Knight Revenant Force Champion, which is good that she's not magic, because usually all these champions are magic affinity, so that's kind of nice. Although you do have to remember in Knight Revenant 21, you are going to have that triple Valkyrie wave. Valkyrie is a spirit affinity champion, so she is going to tear Mother Sabel to shreds, uh, unless you have some form of CC, which actually she can help out with. We'll see here in a minute. So... Let's look at the number of books she takes right off the bat. You can see she needs six books on her A1, three on the A2, and then three on the A3. So 12 books, kind of run in the middle of the road now. I mean, that's not too bad, but you have to see if her kit's worth booking too. That's another thing you kind of have to look at. So her A1 attacks all enemies, has 25% chance of placing a decreased speed debuff for two turns. Pretty solid debuff there. Also fills her turn meter by 15%. Nice little feature there on an A1. The A2, Revive on Death, and a 60% increased defense on all allies for two turns. Uh, that's pretty solid. It is on a six turn cooldown. Looks like you can book it down to three. Uh, so that's kind of a nice ability she has there. Uncanny Transfer is kind of interesting. You swap HP with an ally. If that champion's HP is equal to or higher than the target, uh, it fills her turn meter by 40% and gives her 30% increased speed buff for two turns and gives a block damage buff on the target ally for one turn. If she's lower than the target, it fills the target's turn meter by 40%, gives them the increased speed, and then puts the block damage on her. Also places two 50% continuous heal buffs on this champion for two turns. So that's kind of an interesting ability. Uh, and really, I'm, that's kind of what makes her sort of a niche champion, in my opinion. Uh, you've got a, a passive, which is Gravewalker, fully heals her, uh, fully heals ally with the lowest HP whenever she is killed. So right off the bat, I don't like that. Anytime your champion has to die for something to work, that's not really a great condition. Uh, it does heal all allies by 20% of their max HP and fills a turn meter whenever she gets revived. So you're looking at, hopefully she's got the, the uh, revive on death on her so that when she gets killed, uh, it fully heals the team or the, or the lowest HP um, ally. 
and then it heals all allies when she gets revived. So the kit has some synergy with it. There's some interesting things you can do there, but I think a lot of that is going to be very niche use and very, uh, we're talking like very late end game use for some of the stuff you can do with those abilities. Her aura, uh, that's one of the best things about her too. She has an increased ally speed in all battles by 24%. That is really, really good. It's great in all battles. I have seen that she has a base HP or a base uh, speed of 115. So when you, if you have her in the lead slot, uh, already she's starting off with like 140, 142-ish type speed. So she's not going to be tough to book for speed. You can easily get her over 200, 220 speed plus really easily. Uh, even with just some general basic speed gear or just uh, a couple of decent substat rolls uh, on your gear. So if we're looking at this, like on my main account, I, I'm going to probably get her because usually these fusions are are pretty easy unless the epics just happen to be really, really good. But I don't really know where I'll use her. Uh, like I said, she's got some really interesting abilities. Um, this whole, you know, revive on death with her passive and then the health swap. Uh, I'm guessing there's going to be a mechanic that we need in Doom Tower, the new Doom Tower bosses that are coming out where this is going to be helpful. Um, also, with that one boss that's going to have the bombs that kill your champions, she'll be able to revive with that revive on death buff is kind of good. 60% increased defense is always good. Honestly, where I was looking at this, I was thinking maybe there's some utility here for like a defense arena nuke team if you're like very late game when you have the gear and the champions to spare on that. But if you're looking at this from an early game, mid game player, the two things that you really want to look at are her A1 and also her aura. Like I said, her speed aura, 24% in all battles is really, really good. You can use that anywhere. You can use that in the arena. You can use that in dungeons. You can use that in Doom Tower. Uh, if your team is lacking for speed overall, you can put this champion in the lead slot. You're going to give everybody that huge boost to their speed. Makes it a little bit easier to gear as well. But the A1 is where you've got the utility because it does attack all enemies. And you've got the decreased speed debuff, which is already a pretty good debuff on that. But this really, for me, sets up really well for a stun set, uh, even a toxic set, or even like if you don't have the good stun gear and you can get some daze gear. Um, it's not a great debuff, but it's better than nothing if you're trying to do some crowd control. So you got a couple of gear sets that would pair up very nicely with this. And this is where I thought maybe in fact, or maybe early and mid faction wars for Night Revenant, that would be a really good ability for her with a stun set because crowd control in faction wars is very important. So that's definitely one of the uh, best, uh, you know, strong suits she has going for her is that A1 ability. The A2 ability is also pretty solid, I think. Um, in my in my opinion here where she loses utility for early game is with the passive and the uncanny transfer uh, in my opinion i just not really sure where a newer account or mid game account is going to use uh, any abilities like this and like i said i think these synergize with a revive on death with at least with the healing but that's probably going to be something that comes in handy like i said with later game content uh, like doom tower but for early game if you can get her the speed aura is going to be very helpful the A1 is going to be very helpful. You know, you could even tune her to where she's just like spamming this A1 uh, with the way they have the AI changes set up. Uh, but yeah, I think overall good base speed. I don't know her other base stats. I'm sure she's going to be very high up in HP. Um, but great base speed. You can make her really fast, easy to gear her for that statistic, which means you could focus on other statistics when you're building her with your gear. And, you know, overall, I think... I think it's it's a middle of the road fusion. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's good. Like I said, make your own opinion on it. Uh, my free to play account, I will not be pursuing this because I just don't have the resources. My main account, I'll probably at least go for it, get all the epics to the point where I could craft it and then decide really if um, I'm gonna use her or not. I should have Night Revenant Faction Wars already done by then. So she's really not gonna come into play for faction wars but again i'm thinking she's going to be a lot like elagias where when they announced the fusion a lot of people thought she was going to be bad and not really have much use and then doom tower came out obviously elagias was very good for doom tower so i really think she's going to be useful somewhere and i think that's the one thing you also have to keep in mind with a lot of these fusions is they may get buffed later down the road uh, they may be useful on content that we haven't seen yet. We know Player is working on content a lot behind the scenes. And it may be something that she's going to excel in that we just don't know about yet. But there's all kinds of different factors that have to go into your decision on whether or not you're going to fuse this champion. I'm not going to tell you to do it or not do it. I'm just going to tell you to make your own decision. Uh, you're a smart, educated person. You can read her kit. You can look at your own champion roster. You can see where she's going to help you, where she may not help you and you can decide whether or not you want to get it. So I think that's really the attitude 
you need to kind of look at this with is, you know, what's it going to do for your account? How easy is it going to be for you to finish the fusion? Um, you know, ask yourself those questions, do your own research and answer the question for yourself. I think that's the best way to go about it. Anytime you're trying to decide whether or not to go after uh, one of these champions in these events, uh, cause it seems like we're having a fusion every single month now, and you got to kind of pick and choose the ones uh, you're going to go after, especially if you're a free to play or a low spend player. Like on my free to play account, I've already decided we're going to try to do the fragment fusions cause they're pretty easy. We did get Versoth who's helped out quite a bit on the free to play account. And we also did get Huntmaster Raul. Those were the two fusions we were able to finish and they were both fragment fusions. So I think from now on, we're just going to pursue those on the free to play account where we don't have as many resources. And then on my main account, obviously, uh, we're level 91. We're pretty far in the game about to finish Faction Wars. So it's going to come down to a matter of, do I really want to just have some fun with this champion and build them out to see what they can do? So that's kind of my take on that, guys. Um, let me know down below, you know, what you guys think about this fusion, whether or not you're going to go after it. Uh, like I said, make your own decision. Don't go off what anybody else tells you. Uh, you know, just, just look at all the factors that are going into it and make a good educated decision for your own account. That's going to be the best way uh, to go about this. Um, as always, guys, I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you again next time.